Good evening, everybody. How y'all doing today? This is Yusuf Chowdhury tuning in once again from San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. It is 6 p.m. Central Time right here. Okay, so let's see what kind of question we have for today. Uh, yesterday we talked a little bit about search engine and a couple of questions we answered. Today I'll do my best to continue talking about this subject. This subject. Okay, so what are the question right here? What are the uh, what are the website factors in terms of starting up? What what is it? Oh, okay, all right. So you're basically saying that what are some of the factors to consider when building a site? Mustafa, my man, what's going on, bro? Salam alaikum. How are you? How can a single man or woman digitally market themselves for marriage? <laughs> Well, join all those matrimonial sites, okay, and listen to the advice that I give you. <laughs> uh, digitally, well, I don't know, man. With digitally, I mean, that's kind of a good question. I mean, you can probably start uh, building a personal site and um, put something like looking for marriage. That's going to be kind of, uh, I don't know, a little bit crazy because you'll get trolled possibly, right, putting your stuff out there. <laughs> um well, first of all, before you do that, you, you do need to understand the difference between uh, man and woman. You know, uh, man and woman think differently; they process things differently. And if you want to put yourself out there, uh, of course, we as Muslim we have rules. We should stick to it, uh, and you can uh, approach things based on the uh, you know the Islamic teachings. You know, the the proper way of approaching. If you're interested in somebody. Uh, you can ask them, then after that, if they said yes or whatnot, then contact their family, contact their, especially their father, if it's if you're marrying, you know, since you are a guy, and get the father's permission, then after that, you know, make sure you, you do follow the halal way. Charles, what's going on, my man? So, yeah, uh, so if you put yourself out there, uh, you know, uh, because the thing with digital, bro, I mean, when it comes to things digitally, you cannot put your, your life all online, right? I mean, people still need to talk to you to get to know you on a personal level. So the internet doesn't say that much. A lot of, in fact, to be honest with you, a lot of so-called, if you're looking for sisters through the social, most of them are actually not who they are, who they claim to be, right? So if you do want to really marry through digitally, no sound, that is going to suck. Uh, what, what, what is this? What is this? Let me know if the sound coming up. I'm going to wait for a few minutes. There's no sound. No sound, no sound. Let me know if you can hear me. Hey, Mustafa, can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Because, because Charles says there's no sound. That is going to suck. I think there is a sound because Mustafa did respond to my greeting. So Charles, is it yours? So Mustafa said he can hear me. So Charles, maybe it's your phone. You can hear me again. Make sure that you make it great again. <laughs> right? So not sure if Mustafa was just, you know, joking with me. But the, when it comes to digital, I mean, really, the matrimonial side is your best bet. I mean, you can go to purematrimony.com. Half hour dean, and nowadays they use like uh, so called must match and mender, you know, all this stuff. Just but, but you got to be careful though, because a lot of crazy people out there too, you know, you got to filter out and you got to be serious. You can also talk to uh, look, man, I've been telling you a long time ago, you know, that you need to talk to your community, talk to the imams, you a lot of friends on social, let them let the world know, hey, I'm looking. If nobody knows, then how they can find you, right? I'm sure that a lot of sisters, you know, I'm sure a lot of sisters out there that want to get married, right. So the 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 what you, the ocean is full of them. <laughs> okay, all right, man. So there you go. That's my tip for you on how to digitally uh, put yourself out there. And there's so many groups as well. The private groups. There's so many groups of you know community help, you know, matchmakers and whatnot. So uh, just uh, don't act like you're too desperate. <laughs> okay, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> So just do your best, man. Do your best. Find so many ways, okay? Find so many ways. All right, Charles, what you got, man? So yesterday we talked about some of the uh, points on the SEO. One of the questions that I got here that talks about what are the factors to consider when, it build, when building a website. 
So Charles, you build the website too, so feel free to engage, feel free to chip in. Let me know what, what else you can think that we can consider when it, when we when anybody wants to build a website, like our businesses or providers, right? <clears throat> so the first thing is, uh, some of the points I'm going to mention to you guys when it comes to website factors to consider. The first thing is <clears throat> website design, right? So when I talk about the website design, uh, I'm focusing more on two elements. The first one is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the buyer's uh, persona. The buyer's persona <clears throat> are the your target audience. So you, you have to actually research and understand who is your target audience because you're building something for them, right? If you're building a bicycle for a human being, then you know what is the human being, right? Who are they? Like, or maybe bicycle uh, hobbyists or bicycle fanatics. They, they are the one that wants to buy this awesome bicycle, right? <clears throat> so you need to know your audience. That's called buyer's persona. Uh, the second thing within this element is called a buyer's journey. That means when the target audience come to your website, in what kind of journey do you want to take them? Like, what do you want them to do in terms of call to action? What pages do you want them to focus on to understand your brand, your services, and your product and whatnot? Okay, so... And, and the design has to reflect that particular industry. So if you are into yoga, there's a particular way how the yoga is built. If you are into, let's say, insurance, there's a particular way if it's built or real estate or attorney. So they all have like a part particular design and layout and idea to basically kind of send that message what kind of business you are in. Make sense? <clears throat> That's the first thing. You have to, to uh, take web design into consideration. Of course, you let the designers to take care of that, have them translate your ideas into a design since you are not a, a a graphic designer or web designer i don't think you have every right to dictate exactly how, how things should look from design point of view because you're not the designer right <clears throat> how are you what's going on good to see you got any question for me today so that's number that's number one the, the second thing that you have to take things into consideration when it comes to website is called accessibility, okay? I'm going to repeat this. Accessibility. So what do I mean by accessibility? This, these are the option for people with disability, like the blind and the deaf, right? So when you build a website, you have to take these sort of things into consideration. Like I got to make sure the website is accessible for them, the way it's built, uh, certain things that we don't even think about it. So for example, if you have a form, that says enter your name and email address and a message and click submit. But before you click submit, <clears throat> there is a captcha that says one plus one equals to two, type two. So visually, for, for our naked eye, we can see what it is, right? But for a blind person, they don't know what, 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 what the system tells them. What is this captcha? It doesn't tell them. So, and, and not just that, if they use keyboard, you have to make sure that the when you use the tab button, the, the option from the from the name to the email to the message keeps moving using the tab and not the mouse. Does that make sense? Farouk, what's going on, my man from Abu Dhabi, my homeboy? Uh, <laughs> in some in, uh, in semantic club. Uh, I'm well, alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair. I trust the same with you. Absolutely, alhamdulillah. Always good, even when you're in pain. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so that's accessibility. And there's a whole different technique on what to take into consideration just for the accessibility part okay so that's number two in terms of website consideration the third point is called usability this is where uh, the user experience the 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 U ui user interface ux user experience or user factors it's very important for your customer when they visit a website like pages are fast they're able to uh, look for what they're searching for. Uh, it's so easy to navigate on the mobile devices, on the desktops, right? And they they have they feel that experience. You know, just like when you go to Starbucks, you probably have a good experience, even though the coffee sometimes sucks, right? So same thing. So you have to take usability and user experience into consideration. So that is number three. Number four, uh, website development. So when you build a website, you have things called uh, template. A base website like you know uh, Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, Shopify, BigCommerce. These are services that you can actually pay them monthly. They have a drag and drop system. 
it's template based so you can just work within the template only so you cannot go beyond that so that's one option the second option web languages so there's the old school html xml css java drupal ruby on rail uh react and C cms wordpress php c double plus right so these are web languages that means you have to have a developer that builds on these web languages you have to make a decision are you gonna pick any of those or pick the template base or just go with the wordpress which is a combination of php and, and a cms so you have to take that into consideration which option you're gonna go with okay so that was number uh number four <clears throat> Number five, um, server uh, management uh, and domain provider. So what kind of company I'm hiring? Is it uh, for web hosting or even for buying the domain? Is it going to be GoDaddy, Namecheap? Uh, if I want to host it, am I going to host it on the same company like within GoDaddy because they offer that services? Or am I going to go with somebody else like you know, SiteGround, WP Engine, Liquid Web, uh, Digital Ocean? Uh, these companies are, you know, very well known. Get Flywheel. So you have to take these companies into consideration because if they have an awesome customer service, if they do have 99% so-called 99% uptime, you know, for the server, technically there's no 100% because things can, things can happen. But you got to take this in, into consideration because you want to go with the company that have a good quality service, good security system, that the site doesn't crash, the server doesn't crash. Makes sense? So that is number... Um, uh, number four, which is a website, I'm sorry, uh, number five, which is a server management or domain management, which means like domain provider or the web hosting provider. Okay. Uh, uh, number six, number six, number six, what to consider when it comes to website, uh, social media, do you, are you going to have a social media platform and how many social media platforms that you're going to have? Because the way you build the site, the messages that you are going to have on the website has to be reflective on the social media channels in terms of content and activities and whatnot. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So that is uh, number <clears throat> uh, six. What else? Number six. Uh, number seven, you have to make sure that you have some sort of data analysis or some sort of system or software to collect data in terms of like user behaviors and activities, right? So like Google Analytics, uh, Google Search Console, these are very important. Hudan, my sister started a cooking channel. Do you recommend her to purchase Twitch viewers? I would recommend to purchase none of the viewers because that's kind of like, you know, back in the day, people used to buy likes, Twitter followers, Instagram followers, but those are mostly fake and not relevant. So I wouldn't uh, purchase viewers. What I would do, run an ad. So my question to you, Hudan, is she, uh, uh, I'm assuming it's a YouTube channel, right? Is it a podcast or is it a YouTube channel? If it's a YouTube channel, uh, one of my first recommendations would be try to, <clears throat> well, first of all, let me know if it's a YouTube channel, okay? That is the first question. Is it a YouTube channel? Is it a YouTube channel? It's like it's going to take you forever to type if it's a YouTube channel or not. So like, is it a YouTube channel? Is it a YouTube channel? Yes, it's a YouTube channel. Let me try something here so people can probably see the question. Uh, YouTube channel, okay. All right, let me show you something about when it comes to YouTube channel. So first thing first, so that's going to be a whole... So first of all, uh, make sure that she utilizes this awesome plugin called TubeBuddy. Okay, TubeBuddy will help you to get uh, make awesome custom thumbnails. It would help you to grab some of the most popular tags. If she can look at other cooking channels and YouTube videos that are ranking, right? She can grab some of those tags from those videos. So her videos can be more, uh, 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 get more exposure and searchable and whatnot. So make sure you use this awesome Chrome extension. It's, it comes with a free option, of course, and paid. You can just do the free one. It has a bunch of videos to show you how to do keyword research, how to do the, th uh, the thumbnail, how to find uh, relevant key phrases, pull up tags from other popular videos within the same niche. Okay, so the, my first advice is use this awesome plugin heavily. Okay, like really, really, you gotta make sure that you use it. It's gonna be super helpful. 
So have her check out TubeBuddy. And if she wants to know how to use it, just go to uh, under the feature. You can see all the uh, videos, uh, tutorials. And all these videos are like very short, like a one to two minutes uh, that can explain to you exactly. Look at all these, you know, bulk processing video, SEO, uh, you know, a template card, a common filter, a lot of cool stuff. Okay. So first thing first, have her use this okay that is a very very it's called tube buddy all right it's called what tube buddy tube buddy have a use tube buddy that's one thing secondly uh she can upload her videos on other multiple video sites like you know uh daily motion meta cafe blip tv i don't know i don't, I don't think blip TV is still there but there are other multiple video sites that you can upload it to okay Number three, uh, I advise her to create a website for her channel where she can add the video with the captioning on the website as a blog post and having a transcript of those videos with the recipes and making like a blog because that way the search engine can read the material and people that, people that don't want to watch the video just want to listen or people with disability, for example, I mean, they have the caption that reads it for them. So now you can have a, a plan B to use the website because the thing with the YouTube, understand this, you do not own YouTube. They can shut you down anytime. So you have to have your own real estate. And the real estate is your own website. So have a build website using a self-hosted WordPress-based website where she can put all the material there. And if she wants to turn the cooking show into a podcast, then she can uh, use like a Libsyn or Anchor to submit all her video-based YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, video-based podcast to other multiple podcasting sites. Okay. So that's some of the three strategies I would recommend in order for her to build the brand. And also with the website, you can collect name and email addresses of your uh, viewers. Because on YouTube, you can have subscribers and views, but there is no way for you to eventually in the future, let's say she's going to uh, create a recipe book, right? If you have a website, you can have people you know, basically coming in and subscribing, and she can sell those uh, recipe books later on. She can also have like maybe some type of membership training uh, on cooking videos where people can pay monthly or one-time fee does that make sense so it's good to have a website even though she's starting a, a a youtube cooking channel okay and if you want to learn more about some of the strategies and tips on how to um uh, enhance <coughs> i don't know what happened to my throat let me drink some water like what, what was that oh my god <coughs> enhance there you go my true voice is, voice is out. For a second, I feel like a freaking wimp. So, yeah. Ha, ha, so, let me know if you want me to discuss this topic maybe next week on just YouTube strategies. We can talk about that, okay? So, going back to the original question about website factors. So, we talked about website design, accessibility, uh, usability, and user experience, uh, website development, uh, so, uh, server management, and domain name uh, registration provider, social media, analytics. Make sure you have Google Analytics and the Google Search Console configured to your website. And making sure that the website works and uh, very informative, mashallah. Thank you. You're most welcome, Hudan. So multi make sure the website works on multiple browsers. Okay, make sure that just because it works on Firefox doesn't mean it works on Opera or Chrome or the crappy Edge, aka, AKA uh, Internet Explorer. So you have to make sure because sometimes if it works on Safari, it doesn't mean it works very well on Firefox. You've got to make sure that it works on all of them. Okay. Here, I'll definitely share this video with her. Please, yeah, if you if you all enjoyed this video, uh, just a reminder, go ahead and invite some of your cool colleagues, businesses that want to learn this, tag them or share this. I would highly appreciate it. Okay. But do let me know if you want me to talk about YouTube uh, tips next week. Let me know. If you have time, we can cover it today. But i got to actually leave in... Um, 20 minutes gotta help a customer okay so that was let's see let's see multiple browser multiple browsers so number nine what should be number nine um things to consider yes things to consider you have to make sure also that the website is mobile friendly. That means, especially nowadays, everything is mobile, right? In fact, some of my clients, when we built the site for them, we focus more on the mobile because the traffic 
and the type of market was mobile based, right? So even if you build it for the desktop, you got to make sure that that design, of course, is going to change in the mobile device, but make sure that the texts are big, the phone number are clickable, the texts are dark in color, not too gray that you can even see, right? And uh, images are uh, not basically taking over all the pages in the mobile device. If you have a pop-up, make sure the pop-up has a big X button and whatnot. So you got to make sure that it's mobile friendly. Okay. Then you also have to take into, into consideration like how many uh, pages do you want to have on uh, Lashanda, what's going on? How are you? You want to make sure that how many pages do you want to have on the website and why do you want to have them? There has to be reason behind it. Okay. Then make sure what type of, uh, do you see my messages on YouTube? Not really. That is weird. I don't see your messages on YouTube. Like, wow, crazy. Usually, Ecom picks it up. YouTube suggests, please, next week. Okay. You, you typically, usually, uh, Ecom picks it up, but I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't see it. I don't know. I got to troubleshoot that. But I'm sure I'm in YouTube, but uh, too bad for people that commenting and their name is not going to... I'm getting the Periscope coming up. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, Monday, we'll talk about YouTube. So, make sure you are here. Okay. Because <laughs> sometimes people ask me, talk about this, and uh, then they don't show I'm like, what? What just happened? All right, so how many pages do you need, and why do you need them? Make sure that you have a proper call to action, whether it's a book an appointment, uh, am I eligible, uh, contact, or get a copy, or one, you know, just main call to action, or get an estimate, make sense? Then... Uh, uh, also make sure that you have some type of lead capture system, like an email service, like you know, Aweber, MailChimp, um, uh, MailerLite, so you can capture name and email address. So that's called lead capture. So for that, you have to use those email services. Uh, you also have to make sure your sitemap is set up correctly. So if you have all these pages, static pages, blog pages, footer, there's something called sitemap. Make sure you create the sitemap so when the spider comes in, the Google bot, you will be able to basically go through everything and not miss a couple of the pages, okay? Then you have to hire a copywriter. So if you have your idea, your vision, the copywriter will basically look at it, and if it's good, you're good to go. If, if it needs some changes, then we can go ahead, you know, they change it and tweak it in a sense that it can speak to your target audience in a proper manner. Make sense? Then you also have to take into consideration backlinks. If it's a, it's a, if it's a fresh new website, you can run, run an analysis for your competitor. But if it's an existing website for quite some time and you're redesigning it, then you have to check the backlinks. Where are the links coming back to me externally? From which sites I'm, I'm getting all this backlink? Where am I pointing it out to which sites? All this information really matters. Then you also have to take into consideration keyword research because the way you build the site, it has to address to your target audience, what your target audience are looking for, what the, what are they searching. So you have to make sure that the way you build the pages and you put the content has to reflect that, okay? And uh, last, well, actually the last is like the first one. I mentioned the beginning of website design and before the website design, you have to really look into who is your buyer's persona, which is your target audience. And you also, you also have to think about the buyer's journey, okay? So these are some of the ideas when it comes to like, even before deciding to build a site or, or having a website. Make sense? So so that's what I would, you know, suggest to look into. But when it comes to building the actual website, I have this very popular, most common five questions that I ask any new prospect, and that is, you know, what is the purpose of the website? How many pages do you need and why do you need them? And what do you want the visitor to do when they visit the website? And what is the one main primary relevant call to action that you want to implement? And how are you going to capture these traffic or leads? Okay, so these are the questions that I always ask any prospect that jumps in that needs some help. Okay, so hopefully I was able to answer that question. Okay, so so that's 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 the thing when it comes to like you know things to consider when it comes to uh, website. Now there is one question about you know when having a pages, why these pages matter, and how does it uh, what does Google look for when it comes to like, you know, building a pages? What are they looking for? If you remember, I talked about some of the elements that in order for <clears throat> the Google bot to look at your website and consider you a relevant, reliable, authentic business provider, there are a few things they have to 
look into, right? The, for, for example, there's something they call, uh, they look for something called uh, authority of the website. So how can I make my website have some type of score or value of an authoritativeness? Did I even say that? Authoritativeness. I can't even say that. Authoritative. Anyway, authority. Okay. How can I create an authority on my website? And that based on what? What kind of numbers? What kind of score to determine that it has some sort of authority? So in, for, to answer that question, basically you have to have relevant or, or uh, tons or more backlink, relevant backlink uh, that is pointing back to your website. This will build an authority. Or your social media channels. Do you have a lot of social media? I'm sorry, you have a uh, targeted audience in the social media channels that you created and there's some sort of engagement activities happening on those channels, right? So the backlink and also the uh, the social media presence and the content presence online. So that's one of the signals of authority, right? Also, one of the signals of the authority is that, you know, the real name of the company, uh, the contact information of the company, uh, having a page called an about page about the company because who is this company? Uh, uh, like, what is this, right? Like, what is this company? There has to be an about page. Okay, uh, that also helps with the authoritativeness or expertise level, right? Then you have to look at are these content relevant? Are these content contextually contextual, contextually relevant, right? Uh, does it add any value? Does it have all the on-page SEO properly implemented? Okay, because these are some of the signals of authority, right? And what about trust? How can I make sure that my website can build some sort of trust? And that goes back to like having a high quality content that answers the questions, the challenges, what the audience need, backlinks, uh, reputable resources or citation heading back to the website. Okay. And um, also the, the user experience on the website. So for, for Google to look at, the, at your website to consider you a website with authority, Right, you have to look at the backlinks, the on-page SEO about the company, the contact information, and actual people that are running the business. Right, the content is so highly valuable. Right, uh, who is the who is the contributor of this content? Uh, are these real name or fake names? Right, so all these part of the signals that Google look for when it comes to a website. So if you're building up pages, make sure why you have an about page. Make sure all the information about your company or the address. All are accurate and not just pin names or fake names or anything like that. Make sense? So these are some of the signals that you have to make sure that you have it on the website to make your website have some sort of authority. So when Google index it, when Google goes through everything on the page, it looks at the information about the company, looks at the map, looks at the, uh, the phone number, looks at the email to make sure these are real people and not a spams or fake sites or one of these so-called guru mentality nonsense, uh, get rich quick. Uh, scams, right? So basically, you have to be in the practice of, uh, you know, how to investigate. If you want to investigate a site, you got to look at all this information to make sure that these are all legit and, and information are easy uh, to be found about the company and the founder because of the way it was built. Anytime you see a website that looks pretty nice, but you can find uh, what is the address, where is the location, what's the business email, the phone number. Who is the person behind it? When was the website created, right? So you have to be in that mode of like investigative type of uh, thinking, okay? So that's what uh, Google looks for. Some and actually, not just sometimes they actually look at these sort of things when it comes to uh, authority, okay? Janet, what's going on? How are you? How was the shimmy shimmy? <laughs> How you doing? Thank you for tuning in. Okay. So that's that sort of thing that you have to look for when it comes to like, you know, when, when you build, you got to make sure that these sort of information are there, especially the on page. You know, the on page optimization is really, really important because the on page optimization or the on page SEO is not just for the search engine. It's not just for Google, man. It is also for your audience. Your customer needs to understand, like, you know, what I'm looking at, what, what, it, what, your website, what is it telling me, like what I'm supposed to do next. Make sense? So those are the questions for today. Let me know if you all have if you all have any more question. Today is Friday. Let me know if you all have any more questions. Questions. What does uh, eat mean in SEO? Okay, it just mean eat uh, uh, 
uh, selling enormous octopus, right? So it's as a term I just came several years ago. It's a short for uh, expertise, authority, and trust. That's what uh, usually it stands for. Okay, so this is the concept that Google, they have it on their system, the concept of EAT, which is expertise, authority, trust. So that means, again, going back to the first point, how to make your website has have these three qualities, the, the expertise level, the authority level, and the trust level. So to make sure that you have these three quality, you got to make sure that the name of the business is real. It's a real company name. It has all the contact information on the about page or on the footer. It's easy for somebody to kind of find you and contact you and whatnot. You don't want to have excessive unnatural links on the sidebar, like too many links pointing somewhere else, right? You don't want to make, uh, you don't want to have so many spaces for ad, uh, what do you call it, banners and whatnot. Make sense? If somebody's writing the content, you don't want to say an admin or uh, let's say ninja contributor. You got to put the actual name. Somebody will write the articles or the blog posts, for example. And when you talk about any subject, it's really highly recommended to have some sort of citation. What's up, my man? To have some sort of citation that points to relevant sites and whatnot. What's up? Do you have a second? Uh, sure, what's what you need? Can you connect to the Wi-Fi, bro? The Wi-Fi? Yeah. Well, I'm live streaming right now, so. Oh, no, no, then don't worry about it. Uh, one second, let me, let me just do it real quick because I can yeah. go like Wi-Fi right here. Excuse me, folks. Uh, I'm helping my friend here. Dude. Okay, Wi-Fi. I think I fixed the Wi-Fi. You did? Yeah. Uh, let's see. It, it, it did. Con it's connecting. There you go. Connected. Yeah, there you go. Just don't hit the password because people are listening here. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I thought that we were using this one right here. The bottom, oh, it's unplugged, right? Okay. That's trash. Okay, that's trash. Can I sell it? Sell it. All right, folks, I'm back. So, yeah, so by going back to the expertise, authority, and trust, uh, look into the, the name of the company, has to be the contact information about your page, uh, no excessive unnatural links on the sidebar, no too many ad pop up. Whoever read the article, whether it's you or somebody from your company, make sure their name is there and what's the title. If you are going to write a content that points, uh, you know, a lot of I opinions and ideas, make sure you have a proper citation. What are you, what are you getting it from? If you have an e-commerce website, make sure you have all the authorized net and the HTTPS and the security and uh, testimonies and whatnot for, you know, authority level and whatnot. And make sure you have all these pages like... Uh, Legal disclaimer, privacy policy, terms of service, and accessibility disclaimer, and so forth, right? So these, these are some of the concepts when it comes to uh, the expertise in authority and trust, okay? All right. All right, folks. So let me know if y'all have any more questions for today. I'm going to wait for one more minute. Any more questions? Any more questions? Any more questions? Well, actually, let's talk about... Uh, since we have a few times here, let's talk about, I wanted to cover the SEO, but let's go ahead and see if we can, uh, if Houdan, if you're still here, if you are still here, Houdan, let me know uh, if you have any more question on the subject of YouTube. Faris, wa salam, what's going on, my man? How can I drive digital traffic to my site immediately? First thing first, you have to hire me and pay me like, one million dollars, right? So if it's immediately, for sure, you can use a Google Ads, a Bing Advertising, uh, YouTube Ads, any of the ad platform, like, you know, content advertising, like Taboola, Outbrain, if you want to point the traffic back to your blog, uh, blog posts. You can also use social media ads, like uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Right now, there's stuff for TikTok, too, and Snapchat, Okay. And that's a good question. I know you were joking, but you got the answer. That's how you quickly uh, send the, uh, what do you call it? Send the traffic immediately. Okay, like immediately. As, as, as soon as you turn, turn, the, turn the ad on, there you go. You're going to get traffic quickly. So, Houdan, if you're still around, let me know. Uh, so, if you have any question about uh, YouTube... Let me see. Let me see right here. Let me see. I'm like, 
Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. All right, so Hudan, there you go. You're you're back. So let me know if you have any question about YouTube. Do you have any question about YouTube? YouTube. Do you have any question about YouTube? Or maybe your sister can come and uh, ask those questions if she's around. We got 30 minutes, so let me let's talk about YouTube real quick, and I'll just cover. Uh, well, actually, hey Lashanda, I know Lashanda also said like YouTube next week. I can repeat it again next week, maybe in depth, maybe in more detail. Maybe next week, if you also have a YouTube channels, y'all, you can show me your YouTube channel, and I can give you some feedback on what areas you need to focus on or fix or adjust, like the banners and the content stuff and whatnot. I can definitely help you with that. So, if you have any question about YouTube, let me know. What kind of question do you have on YouTube? Okay, so I think that one of the most common things when people ask when it comes to YouTube is that how to increase visibility, right? Like how to increase the visibility of my YouTube channel. So, you have to think of a few things. If you're going to talk about, if you if you are going to focus on uh, increasing visibility you have to uh, look at some of the tools you are going to use you have to do a proper uh, research in terms of like title of the like the subject of the video research a keyword research then you have to figure out what kind of keyword tools uh, that you can use right and don't forget to read uh, especially the, the 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 guideline and the policy because YouTube lately been censoring a lot of videos out there and they're changing their policies you got to make sure that you read the policy right uh, read the guideline and don't only rely on youtube because as i mentioned before the social media channels you do not own them you don't own them so if you are going to put all this video on youtube because you're trying to build that community make sure that, that you put the video somewhere else like an amazon server and other sites as well okay so when it comes to the the the, the planning part or this strategy part of the the increasing the visibility right you have to come up with the plan uh, that can be consistent right like for example if you're going to provide the, this cooking show very valuable valuable uh, awesome cooking show on a consistent basis it can be like you know i would say mostly how to cook certain food right so that's what you're basically doing correct then once you once you create those videos it depends on how you're going to um, edit it and whatnot then you have to focus on once you upload the videos then you have to focus on what kind of uh, tags or keywords I'm going to put it, uh, how I'm going to write the description, and how I'm going to utilize the description. Lashanda, yes, if you have any question, I'm, I'm talking about right now about YouTube. So if you have any question, let me know. I'm just kind of quickly going through it. But if you want me to repeat it next week on Monday, I can repeat it again, but with, with more in-depth. And I can also uh, view some of y'all's uh, YouTube channels. Yeah, I know, but we ha I, have, I have like a few minutes left, so... so so let me just kind of quickly go through it, but uh, I have a list of questions. Okay, you have a list of questions. Do you have them right now? If you do, send it over. Take your chance and ask right now unless you want to do it on Monday. Okay? So you do have to optimize, like, you know, the, the keyword research, the title tags, the description, the call to action, how to utilize the description area. Because after all, YouTube it is, is a search engine just like Google because Google bought them. It's a little bit different, right? Then how to get traffic to and how to utilize your YouTube channel to uh, redirect some of the traffic back to your website because your website is your real estate. Make sense? Then you also have to think about how can I increase engagement? How can I increase interaction? Is it based on how I put the video? Is it based on how what do I say at the end of the video? Right? Am I going to share my YouTube videos on Twitter and Pinterest and LinkedIn and Facebook? Sure, you can. Right. So these are some of the ideas when it comes to like, you know, planning and, and strategizing. Right. Now, for increasing the visibility of you, of your YouTube videos. Right. There's a couple of tips I can share with you. The first one, of course, don't forget to use the tubebuddy.com. The second thing, your thumbnails matter. So you have to make sure that the thumbnail that you create has a very big text. Right. 
You do not want to create a thumbnail with your picture small on the corner in a full freaking paragraph. Nobody can read that on the mobile device and nobody can see it on the desktop. So the objective of the thumbnail, either if you're a personal brand, then it's a picture of you. If it's a cooking show, maybe a, a, sl a, a slide picture of the food itself looking very nice, high quality photo, then the title, making chicken curry, <laughs> right? Big one, very easy to see, right? You have to make it stand out. So that's how TubeBuddy can help you with that. Or if you use Canva, Canva has all those features as well. So start with the thumbnail. The thumbnail has to stand out. Don't use colors that are similar to the YouTube channel itself, like the white and red, okay? Uh, use uh, what you call a significant text within the thumbnail. What I mean by that, if it's too small, we cannot see it. If it's too big, that's great. One of my friends was actually teaching um, Arabic languages, so he started with this one, how to, it was so small. I said, listen, man, make the how to the biggest, then the sub uh, uh, subject is like small, so people can see the how to, and that pops out, and the background was yellow, and the text was red in the front, right? But it wasn't white and red, okay? Uh, then, of course, if you use keyword or question-based titles that can also attract your audience. For that, make sure you utilize answerthepublic.com to find out what kind of question people ask. So I can use a YouTube video based on that question. You can also utilize tweakyourbiz.com slash title dash generator to come with some interesting titles, okay? You can also use keyword tool dot io keyword tool dot io they're not free but the first 10 results is free so you can select the youtube option and put the topic and see what kind of question or what kind of titles people are finding within the youtube search network okay so that way you can write something that people are already looking for so it's something with the cooking food uh, you gotta make sure that the title is very interesting and the thumbnail is very interesting and exciting and enticing and it stands out from the rest and that's how you're gonna get the click on it okay so don't forget to use keyword tool.io, answerthepublic.com. And for keyword research, you can use keywordseverywhere.com. It's a Chrome extension, keywordseverywhere.com. It's free. You can also use Uber Suggest uh, Chrome extension to find out more keywords within your title. Can you look at my YouTube channel? Absolutely. Go ahead and share the link. Nishanda, I'm going to look at it and give you feedback. We're still talking about visibility, right? So you have the video, you got the title tag, you got the the tag on the on the, on the back end. Now the description area. This is the very crucial, important subject right here because a lot of folks don't utilize the description properly. They just slap the video and that's it. Did you know that the description is also uh, actually searchable within the YouTube, you know, algorithm because the the search can actually look at this information. So. When people click on the description or more, the first thing you can start with, you know, for more information, click the website. So there you go. You got a traffic going to the website. Then you can explain what is the video about. I know you say, okay, video is already there. Why should I talk about it? Well, look, just do it because I said so, right? So you start with the description in your, uh, you start with the introduction in your description box, the area below the video. Uh, when you describe it, make sure you, in the description itself, you have the relevant uh, keywords within your description, and also don't forget to mention the link at the beginning and also at the end of whatever the paragraph and the whole content you wrote within the description because you can put a timeline, you can put links for other social channels. I mean, it's like a blog post within a video. You know what I mean? So let me check Lashandra right here. I'm going to make fun of her right now. <laughs> let me see if she shared the link. Uh, let's see. Wow, this is funny. I forgot to share the video. I myself forgot to share the video. Crazy! Let me click on your link. But before I do that, be honest. Of course, I'm very honest. You know that. I'm so honest that that's why I have less friends. <laughs> uh, give me a second here. Uh, I totally forgot to share my video. Wow. I got to share my video. Brother Sabir, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you, bro? Good to see you, man. We need to hang out tonight, man. Let me know where you at. Let me know what's the plan. If you're going to do a cookout or or we can go to the Sultan Cafe and do some stuff, man. Give me a second here. I forgot to share this. Wow. This is like the first time in the history of going live. That I did not share. People like wondering, like, what happened to this video today? Give me a second.
Welcome. Oh, okay. I see what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Uh, my God, this Facebook is. One second. I'm in the beginning. Yeah, that's fine. You're in the beginning stage. That's good. All it takes, Lashonda, is just to take that action. That's the first thing. Take action. Don't worry about the perfectionism, all this stuff. Just take that action. That's the first step, right? And it's, it's a big step to kind of, you know, fall on the ground and hit a couple of times and, <laughs> right? So you can, you know, become stronger. So that's that's good. And sometimes we got we to gotta feel that pain, you know, in order for us to, for human being to move forward, you got to experience sometimes some sort of pain. You know what I mean? What is it? Well, it's all new. Okay. So we got to, uh, feel some of those pain otherwise if you don't experience it then how would you appreciate it and how would you know it so just give me a one more second here i'm going to pull it up and um, but i do have to leave in like 15 minutes was well, supposed to be 20 minutes ago but so looks like for sure i'm going to get back on monday and continue talking about <laughs> youtube I can help others, but I'm doing it myself. It's a struggle. Yeah, just like me. I'm just like the the person who uh, uh, makes shoes, right? Or like the surgeon who can uh, do surgery, but not on uh, him or herself. So let's see. Let's see your channel. All right. Stampin. Stampin with Lativa. Okay. First of all, this is a, uh, is this the cooking show thing? Is it? Or is it the craft thing? Because the craft, the background, I, was, I would change the image on the background. Uh, uh, I'm glad that you made the red <laughs> on the text. I can read it easily, but I would definitely change the background. Either completely flat, color white, and change the text, okay? Uh, so that's the background. So use Canva for this background because Canva has so many samples you can use. Okay, crafting. Okay, uh, let's see. And you have this welcome video. The welcome video, when when somebody comes to you upset, the welcome video is highly recommended to be something like within less than a minute because or, or a few seconds, because that's like the intro for the page. Makes sense. Like the the intro for the website. So I will change the background. That background needs to be changed. So let me see if I can pull up my uh, channel here. So, change the background because uh, that that background looks like ugly. <laughs> All right, so we gotta change the background. So, uh, <laughs> hey, you said it. Be honest. So, something like that, you know. That's just me, right? Uh, I'm writing all this down. Okay, change the background for sure. And you know, you know how to use Canva. Canva has so many samples just for this for the background. When it comes to intro, you can see in my channel, right here. Uh, where did it go? Well, right now because I guess I'm live. Typically, when it comes to my channel, there is this one video, that's like an intro video for the channel. I don't know if you ever seen it, but it's like, um, it's like one uh, less than right here. This one here. This is my. Uh, uh, this is my uh, intro. It's very old. You can see uh, it's only 33 seconds. What's wrong? I'm trying to figure out my online marketing. It's time to call you, sis. It's very cringy, but it's all good. I'm a king of cringe. Yeah, sometimes uh, violence is necessary. Did I just say that? <laughs> yeah, only defend somebody, right? I'm just kidding, Paul. Don't take me seriously. Do you want online results? Subscribe to my channel. Okay, so some sort of intro that explains what this website is about, like 30 seconds, 50 seconds. Uh, I would use that. And if you need to have some sort of cool graphic and stuff like that, you can always uh, download the After Effects graphics from like a theme. If you go to themeforest.net, there are tons of video graphic and you can have somebody else uh, recreate the graphic, uh, the intro graphic for your channel, for your show. <laughs> Look at Lauren. <laughs> All right. Uh, I also noticed that you don't have thumbnails. Make sure all your videos has thumbnails. 
like uh are these thumbnails are these, oh there you go awesome i like this one this is cool see this is yusuf had approved right here i like this one okay the video is cool i'm not that jiggy with it <laughs> uh so i love this one this is yusuf had approved right here what i would do a little bit i know you made it i know you made it to the center i'll just bring it a little bit here so i can have more space for the text okay uh make the text a little bit bigger having this bigger more okay but i love this one this is very good david what's going on my man hey we're supposed to meet tonight right so uh, i know it's almost 6 50 text me when are you going to be there at my other location okay and uh so i can uh, meet you lauren i know i said uh i'm gonna zoom with you after the live streaming but i gotta help david with something so when i'm done i'll text you back and follow up with you okay so this thing this is very good uh lashanda this is this is very good so something like this is very good uh but the thing is because if it's a different video try to change the color a little bit uh, of the text itself i know the images are different from this one to this one but don't make the image similar even though this is different but they look similar right so different images uh, bigger text and the title for every text it's not the same like uh let's say this is red and this is sometimes blue it's a little bit different uh dude don't ditch me <laughs> don't worry you will not be ditched okay just want to let you know it's very important that i have uh, what, is, what is it i have to you know help all of you right so so that's it the rest of them has no uh, uh thumbnail so make sure you put thumbnails and i don't know how many times you uh what do you call it do these videos and also make sure that you have some type of uh what you call it playlist it's very important to have a playlist like okay craft halls announcement my favorite. okay good so you have a good playlist okay yeah don't make it similar because for the eye uh, it has to be different so i can notice it if it's the same i might miss it i might think oh it's the same thing possibly right so uh but anyway it's a 652 i do have to run <laughs> okay not literally so let's continue with the subject lashanda so far this is good and uh, i can also show you how to use canva to change the background we'll talk in depth wait wait make uh, thumbnails for all of them yes for all of them yeah because it has to stand out okay so check out the two buddy because you can create them on two buddy so do that okay i'm gonna bounce right now i will definitely come back on monday 6 p.m and let's continue talking about seo and youtube on monday okay all right any final question before i jump any final question before i jump Oh man. <laughs> uh put the work. You must welcome Hudam Alik Salam. Alright, I'll see you guys on Monday. And don't forget to keep sending me those questions. Like if you have like a million questions about YouTube, SEO, send it. Put on the comment section, DM me, and Monday will cover. And Monday we'll have more time, hopefully, even. Uh if you guys have more questions, I can continue with this. But today, like I said, I gotta help uh two folks today with something real quick so uh all right so lauren i'll message you uh dave you're on your way i'm gonna go there and meet you so don't be late because i gotta take care of your stuff real quick okay all right folks thank you so much for tuning in you all have an awesome weekend and don't work too hard okay i'll see you later bye 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 bye